Hey there friends, Scott here with the Networking Layer. Thank you for tuning on in, really appreciate you. Today I want to reach out to the new students that have the ability to actually play with live equipment. This can be very, very, very intimidating at first glance. You hear the hum of the machines, you see the lights blinking, and your mind just goes What the heck am I supposed to do? If this is how you feel when you look at live equipment, let's walk through this together so that we can get you to be more comfortable when you're working with live equipment. Let's first look over a few of the things that we're going to be using before we learn how to wire things up. Come on, let's go check it out. Today, we're just going to be going over the basics of how to connect devices. So, we will be using two devices, the switch and the router. Now, onto the switches. Switches can be somewhat intimidating. When you look at them, they may only have a few ports, possibly as low as four, or they may have up to 48 ports or higher. When wired up, they can have blinking lights, solid lights, and even lights that change color. But the main takeaway is this. Don't let this intimidate you. Others before you have been exactly where you are now. Just remember this. If you can wire this, then you can also wire this. And let's not forget about this one, which can lead up to this. Let's take a quick minute and discuss routers. Routers aren't as intimidating to many. Main reason why is because in a lab setting, they usually don't have as many ports. They can be larger in size, like the one that we will be using in today's demo. Many routers have the capability to add different modules for different tasks. In today's example, we will have the HWIC 2T module installed, which allows for serial connections. Here we have a picture of a Cisco 2821 router, and right here is where the module card could be placed. Once again, the module that we will be using is the HWIC 2T. Now that we've gone over a brief overview of the router and the switch, we still need a couple more things to make these devices communicate. That's our cabling. Today we will be using an Ethernet cable to connect from our router to our switch, a serial cable to connect between our routers, we will also need a console cable to connect from our computer to the device that we want to configure. Today we will not be going over how to connect to a console port, but when you look at the device you can find a port simply listed as console. That is where your console cable will be connecting to. When you are ready to begin wiring things up and having some networking fun, we need a topology. This is our roadmap on how our devices should be connected. Whenever I get a topology, I always examine the topology to see what might be needed for the task at hand, understand the topology, which means that I know what my end goal actually is. I then print the topology out so that I can bring it with me over to the devices. This way I do not need to memorize what cable goes to what port. I then implement the topology according to the diagram. This is the simple topology that we will be implementing today. Let's take a quick minute and go over the first two steps that we just discussed. Looking at this topology, I can see that I'm going to be needing three cables. Two Ethernet cables that's going to run from our routers down to our switches, as well as one serial cable that's going to be running between our two routers. One important thing to note, however, is this right here, the DCE. In this video, we will not get into what the DCE and the DTE is, However, it is important that we follow the diagram. When you look at the serial cable, one end will be marked with DTE, while the other is marked with DCE. Just make sure that the DCE end goes on the appropriate router. Now, one important thing to realize is that we have specific ports that our cabling is to be connected to. When we look at the routers, we can see that we are coming off the G port, meaning the gig port 0 slash 1. Additionally, when we examine the switch, our connections are coming off the F port, meaning that it is a fast Ethernet port. Additionally, when we look at our routers, we can see that right here, we're coming off the S0 slash 0 slash 1 port, and over here, we're coming off the S0 slash 0 slash 0 port. 
we need to pay attention to what ports we are supposed to connect to so that our end goal can be met. Now let's take a quick moment to understand our end goal. In this simple topology, we just want to connect our router down to our switch. We're going to do this on both ends. As well as connect our router to router using a serial connection. All right, let's get to it. Let's wire this up. I did go ahead and print out our diagram, so let's have a little bit of fun. I do have the devices off right now, so you'll be able to hear me instead of the hum of the machines. This here will be switch one, two, three, and here we will have routers one, two, and three. Now I know what you're thinking. The diagram only has two routers and two switches on it. You are absolutely correct. However, in a production or a lab environment, you may have devices present that you will not be connecting to. It's important that you take your time and ensure that you are connecting to the proper devices. Because of this, we will have some devices that we're not going to be connecting to today. Now a quick note on switch ports. It's important that we examine our device to see where the proper switch port is. On the Cisco switches that I have had personal experience with, the switch ports are counted in an up-down fashion. Switch port 1 would be here, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Here we will have our F ports, and over here we have our G ports. So let's go ahead and make some connections. Looking at our diagram, I can see that we are coming off the G or GIG01 port. Here we have our G0 slash 0 and our G0 slash 1, which is where we are going to connect our Ethernet cable. This cable is to be connected to switch 1 on the F0 slash 5 port. So, port 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. Let's go ahead and make that connection. Now let's go ahead and do that same thing on router 3 and switch 3. Let's now go ahead and connect our routers. Looking at the diagram, beginning on router 3, we are coming off the S0 slash 0 slash 0 interface with the DCE connection. I'm now going to go ahead and look at the ends of my cable to make sure that I have the DCE in hand, which I do. And we'll go ahead and connect to the bottom port, which will be the S000 interface. If you're not sure and want to re-verify, we can look at the interface itself where we can see serial zero. The zero would signify that it is going to the S0 slash 0 slash 0 interface. If you wanted to connect to the S001, we would go ahead and attach right up here, which as we can see, would say Serial 1. So let's go ahead, plug it on in. Now that we're connected to Router 3, let's go ahead and connect up to Router 1, which will be going on the top one, which would be S001. And there we go, we just wired our network. All right, so there you have it. All in all, not too bad, not too shabby. Others have been in your exact same shoes, and now they're network engineers. If that's your dream, you can achieve it. Keep moving forward. Never forget to believe in yourself, and never forget that I believe in you. All right, y'all take care, stay safe, God bless, and we'll be seeing y'all in the next video.